Right now on State of Events, federal health officials lifted the pause on the use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And the battle of the century. We'll explain what's going on in this Josh Mosh Pit. Hello and welcome to State of Events. I'm Farrah Walton. And I'm Clarissa Gonzalez. Over on the Hill, the House of Representatives is passing gun reform legislation that is being stalled by the Senate. With more on the story and how San Francisco State is keeping their students safe is Alexis West. 167. Not 167 victims, but 167 recorded mass shootings in America so far in 2021, according to the Gun Violence Archive. This April, President Joe Biden announced half a dozen executive actions to fight what he called an epidemic of gun violence in America. Shortly after the mass shooting that happened in Boulder, Colorado, which killed 10 people, Biden called on the U.S. Senate to pass two gun violence bills that were already passed through the Democrat-led House. I don't need to wait another minute, let alone an hour, to take common sense steps that will save the lives in the future and to urge my colleagues in the House and Senate to act. We can ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines in this country once again. Biden gave an order to the Department of Justice to issue his proposed legislation that would ban the use of ghost guns within 30 days. Ghost guns refer to kits that allow anyone to assemble the firearm using provided parts. These guns do not have commercial serial numbers and are difficult to track. The Justice Department will be given 60 days to issue a separate rule on stabilizing braces which can turn a pistol into a more accurate weapon that fires like a rifle. They also have 60 days to give the Department of Justice time to develop blueprint red flag legislation. This would allow friends and family members to identify an individual as potential danger, thereby temporarily preventing the person from accessing a firearm. Many states already have red flag laws placed. The biggest setback is that the Senate Democrats do not have the 60 votes needed to pass legislation, and Congress has been unable to find a successful compromise on guns in decades making it one of the most deadly issues in American politics. Biden will touch on the realities of passing gun safety legislation and how it is long overdue in his joint address to Congress this upcoming Wednesday, similar to former President Barack Obama's following the Sandy Hook massacre, which killed 29 people, mostly children. While the fate of gun legislation lies in the Senate's hands, San Francisco State University has always prioritized in maintaining the safety of their students, especially considering the growth of mass shootings over the years. San Francisco State University has its own university police department that operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week, year round. All uniformed patrol officers also wear body-worn cameras in a mission President Lynn Mahoney has to ensure transparency. All timely warnings are also distributed through email or text that you can change through your student center. This way, any updates or potential dangers are sent as fast and efficient as possible. You can reach the SF State University Police Department immediately at 415-338 2222. Or if in state emergencies, call 911. This has been Alexis West for State of Events. Governor Gavin Newsom announced on Saturday, April 24th, that California will resume administering the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. The J&J &J vaccine was on pause for 12 days due to the discovery of 15 women under the age of 50 developing an extremely rare type of blood clot. The CDC lifted the halt of the one-and-done vaccine on Friday after experts concluded that the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the scarce risks it poses. Newsom stated that the vaccination is safe and effective. He showed his support of resuming the Johnson & Johnson vaccine by getting the single dose shot himself, joining the one million Californians who have already received it. California's COVID-19 positivity rate is 1.2%, According to Newsom, it is the lowest positivity rate California has experienced in a year and is currently the lowest in the country. For the first time in congressional history, California is losing a seat in the House of Representatives, demoting their member count from 53 to 52. The news follows the Census Bureau's latest report and comes as a result of California's declining population. The Bureau uses a population-based formula to determine how the nation's 435 House seats will be allocated. California grew by about 2.3 million people since the last census in 2010, 
though records have been nearly flat since 2017. According to the Census Bureau, the state can also expect to see a drop in federal funding. Along with California, states like New York, Illinois, and Michigan, to name a few, are also losing congressional seats. This week, Golden State Warriors star Stephen Curry set yet another remarkable NBA record. Here's Logan Flair telling you what Steph did and what it means for the game. On Sunday, April 25th, Stephen Curry set the mark for most three-pointers made in a calendar month in NBA history. Curry's 83rd three broke the record previously held by James Harden, which was set in November of 2019. By the end of the night, Curry had 85 threes, and by the end of April, he has set the record at 96 three-pointers made. This is just another mark on Curry's already astounding resume which includes winning two MVP awards and winning three NBA championships. This only further solidifies Stephen Curry's spot as the NBA's greatest shooter of all time, as he is already second all-time in three-pointers made at just 33 years old. Steph is currently leading the Warriors through the thick of the playoff hunt, making his run of threes even more impressive. With the team hovering around a 500 record, they will need all Steph can give them in order to make it to the play-in tournament to reach the playoffs. This season, you only need to be the 10th seed in order to make the play-in tournament, where the teams with the 7th through 10th best winning percentages battle it out for the final two playoff spots. The Warriors finished their season with six straight home games, and that'll give them a great opportunity to finish strong and really push for those final playoff spots. Reporting live from Chase Center in downtown San Francisco, I'm Logan Flair for State of Events. India is in emergency mode as the second wave of the coronavirus is reaching devastating new heights. The country has reported nearly 350,000 new cases, and their death toll has reached over 200,000. More than 2,000 people are passing away per day. Hospitals have reached their maximum capacity with lines out the door of people desperate to see a doctor. India is experiencing a severe oxygen supply shortage, which is the reason why many patients are dying. The hospitals and the healthcare system are crashing. United States President Joe Biden stated in a tweet, just as India sent assistance to the United States as our hospitals were strained early in the pandemic, we are determined to help India in its time of need. Coming up next on State of Events, Nomadland wins Best Picture at the Oscars. And the local swimmer using the SF Bay as his canvas. We'll explain more after the break. everyone. This past weekend, the Oscars had its 93rd award show, leaving us with some historical and shocking wins, not to mention the fashion statements made. Here's reporter Samantha Pinopio with the recap. This past weekend, the Oscars had its 93rd award show, giving us a whirlwind of events. From historical wins to shocking losses, here's what you missed. The 2021 Oscars took everyone by surprise by having the most diverse slate of nominees and wins this year. Chloe Zhao won Best Director, being the first Chinese woman and first woman of color to do so. Her movie No Man Land also won Best Picture. Reza Med was the first Muslim actor to be nominated for Best Actor, and the hairstylist and makeup team of Moraini's Black Bottom won the Oscar for Makeup and Hairstyling. One win that took everyone by surprise was Anthony Hopkins for his performance in The Father, beating late Chadwick Boseman for Best Actor. 
with the show revolving around a Chadwick Boseman ending, fans were upset about the tribute they actually gave. TV writer Latoya Morgan states, People aren't mad that Chadwick lost. It's the way it played out. The build-up, the letdown, chaos achievement unlocked. As for fashion, celebrities and viewers were grateful to see the red carpet back in action. With limited attendance, we were only able to see a few celebs slay the fashion game. This wraps up our 2021 Oscars recap. I'm Samantha Pinopio, State of Events. Back here in the Bay Area, a different type of artist is putting his skills on the drawing board, except his canvas is the San Francisco Bay. SF local Alan Luong loves to swim, so much so that he would actually swim to Alcatraz at least once a week, just for the fun of it. But the pandemic put a pause on his usual exercise routine. That is, until he got the green light from the governor to start exercising outdoors again. It all started when Luong's friend suggested he swim out the word July. Luong, amused with the idea, completed the task, and then followed with spelling, or should I say swimming, out the words August and Sept for September. But how does he do it? According to Luong, the GPS device he wears on his wrist tracks his workout, and as a result, provides a drawing of the paths that he takes, whether it be on land or in water. Some of Luong's other masterpieces include a jack-o'-lantern, a bunny, and a school of fish. According to Luong, he plans to keep making his creative drawings for as long as he can. How sweet is that? Speaking of long distance exercise, Farah, were you able to catch a glimpse of California's latest celebrity bear son last weekend? No, Clarissa. Unfortunately, I did not. Although I wish I had. It's not every day you see a bear casually walking on the side of the road, especially for 11 days straight. Reporter Donia Romero tells us about this bear's journey. Usually when you see a bear walking on the side of the road, you would want to run away. But this bear attracted attention in a different way. <laughs> Jesse Larios, the man literally inside Bear Sun, strutted his way from Little Tokyo, LA, up 480 miles to San Francisco. Throughout his journey, this joyous bear met many bystanders. We're gonna go try to find this bear. I wanted to see what it was about, so I loaded up the kids, my mom and my sister, and we, uh, we found him. Cool. Larios explains his reasoning for creating this character. Honestly, it's, um... Uh... I always do wacky stuff like that. I've always been like that. Uh, and it was just an idea I just came up with. To keep his feet on the road, Bearson stopped at local gas stations for food and restrooms. He is not staying in hotels. He finds a spot on the side of the road to sleep whenever it gets dark. His journey had a purpose to raise money for a nonprofit that was announced when he reached his destination. You know what? Let me just raise some money while I'm doing this too, you know? Over $17,000 will be donated to the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Barrison documented his journey through live streaming on Instagram and frequent posts. He put a lot of smiles on people's faces this past week. I mean, his name is Barrison, and like the sun, he will brighten your day. Be sure to follow him on all of his socials so you can follow him on his next journey to New York. I'm Daniel Romero with San Francisco State of Events. NFTs have been shaking up the art and business world, which begs the question, what is an NFT? Reporter Christina Holliday has the answer. Question, what do Nyan Cat and Disaster Girl have in common? The answer, both sold for over hundreds of thousands of dollars this year. Now, you might be wondering, if the images were sold, why are they still available online? That's because only the original files were sold in the form of a non-fungible token, or NFT for short. According to the BBC, a fungible asset is something with units that is interchangeable. Like how you can exchange this $20 bill for two tens, value unaffected. NFTs, however, are different because they are one-of-a-kind digital files. They utilize what's called blockchain technology, as San Francisco State Business Communications Professor Paul Glanting explains. So if I send you a PDF right now, you have the PDF and I still have the PDF. So now two exist, right? And if you send that to your friend, we both have it and they have it. And now three of them exist. Or things like cryptocurrency uh, and NFTs basically make it so it's difficult for replicate. You can't replicate, right? It's one of a kind. And as they gain popularity among the art and music worlds, Glanting points out a particular area of interest. I think it's fascinating. I think that uh, regardless of whether or not NFTs 
are here to stay. I hope at least they are challenging the way we think about what we consume. For State of Events, this is Christina Holliday. Nothing screams 2021 more than this story. It all started with Josh Swain from Tuscan, Arizona. Back in April of last year, Josh decided to create a Facebook group chat with hundreds of people, the invitees, all other users he could find with the name Josh. In the group chat, he challenged them to a duel, provided the date, time, and coordinates, and welcomed them to fight, essentially, for the title of Best Josh. That fight took place last weekend in Lincoln, Nebraska, with over hundreds of Joshes in attendance. It began with the classic rock-paper-scissors duel, then was followed by a pool noodle fight. In the end, the last standing champ was dubbed Little Josh, a five-year-old resident of Lincoln. With the explosive response from the internet, the event quickly became a fundraiser and in total raised over $10,000 for the Children's Hospital and Medical Center. Some have suggested making the Josh fight an annual event, while others say the following year should welcome different names, once again, to battle for the best. Are masks and gloves polluting our oceans? Find out more next on State of Events. Also coming up after the break, need a new companion? We tell you where you may be able to pick out your new best friend. The United States President made history this past week. On Saturday, April 24th, President Joe Biden became the first U.S. President to officially recognize the Armenian Genocide for what it is. Biden began his statement by saying, Each year on this day, we remember the lives of all those who died in the Ottoman-era Armenian Genocide and recommit ourselves to preventing such an atrocity from ever again occurring. Biden pledged in his campaign that he would report the systematic killing and deportation of Armenians in what is now Turkey as a genocide. He recognized global human rights despite harming ties with a key regional ally. He ended his statement by affirming that the American people honor the Armenians who lost their lives in the genocide that began 106 years ago. Since the start of the pandemic, Alameda County has lost over 700 lives due to COVID-19. State of Events reporter Austin Castro takes a look at how one Bay Area organization is paying tribute to those who have lost their lives. And they're doing so one tree sapling at a time. Austin. In Fremont Sabercat Historic Park, members of the organization Greenkeepers USA gathered for their Life for a Life COVID-19 Memorial. The idea is to honor those lost to COVID-19 by planting new trees. I spoke with members of the organization who described why this event was so important to their community. And I think it was just a really heartwarming way to pay tribute to those who passed away. Uh, because it's obviously important to honor these lives. Greenkeepers core members consist of local high school students. They knew they wanted to extend their environmental yeah. mission to tackle the effects of the pandemic. It's a really simple but effective way and we're combining like both like the situation of Corona along with our love for the environment and doing something really impactful and great for the community. Their most recent tree planting is Greenkeepers third and brought together 14 volunteers. They've received support from the city of Fremont to make this memorial possible. We've had like a really positive response, especially since people are seeing high school students make such a big change within their community. As for what's next. I'm looking forward to all the future plantings we have because 
We even have a $10,000 grant from the Arbor Day Foundation uh, because they were so supportive of our mission. To find out more about Greenkeepers or to donate to their cause, you can head to greenkeepersusa.org. From Fremont, Austin Castro, State of Events. While COVID-19 is going at ease, we're all getting ready for some fun summertime trips to the beach. But is the beach ready for us? Masks and gloves may have been saving our lives, but not necessarily around our oceans. Reporter April Scott is with us on the details. April? Hey Sarah, I'm currently at the oceans of Santa Cruz County where oceans like these may not be so glamorous for the upcoming summer. As you can see in our oceans here, they may look beautiful on the outside, but many of us don't know what's been going on under sea since the pandemic. It's the newest type of pollution that COVID-19 has created. While wearing masks are the ones that are saving our lives, there are also the things that have been the most danger for the marine lives. It's a problem that begins in the grounds of our towns and cities, from masks, gloves, and hand wipes, and they all somehow end up in our world's oceans. According to Gary Stokes of OceansAsia.org, about 1.56 billion face masks have entered the oceans in the year of 2020. And we're still finding single-use masks on the beach, and there really is no reason for it anymore. Now, as for the Bay Area, there is still hope on how this organization dedicates on preserving the oceans and coastal habitat. Lynn Adams, the president of Pacific Coast Coalition, organizes a community of Earth heroes that advocate sustainable environment within the Bay Area. What are we going to do? We got masks, we got gloves, we got uh, all those hand wipes, the sandy wipes. And some ways that you can help prevent the masks from landing in the oceans is by using reusable face mask options and dispose your personal protective equipment responsibly. For more information on ways that you can take action and save our beaches, just visit PacificBeachCoalition.org to learn more. Reporting live from Santa Cruz County, I'm April Scott, State of Events. Looking for something fun and exciting to do this upcoming break? Well, Big Bear Lake has some great spots for all. Looking for a nice, relaxing vacation this summer? Then look no further than Big Bear Lake in sunny Southern California. This town is located in the San Bernardino Mountains and have tons of things to do for family and friends. Or if you just need to get away. Places like the Lumberjack Cafe are perfect for helping you fuel up and get ready for the day full of activities. These can include places such as the Mineshaft Coaster at Magic Mountain, which has a coaster that is approximately a mile long that's filled with turns, corkscrews, tunnels, and hairpins. There are also go-karts, an arcade for the whole family, other activities such as mini golf, and even their own zip line. If you're looking just to save some money or get in touch with nature, there are tons of free hiking and off-roading trails. If you don't have an off-roading car, that's okay. You're able to rent some for these beautiful views. Now to talk about the lake itself. It's about a half mile all around. You're able to drive around it. Or if you want to get some exercise, you're able to walk around it too with some beautiful views. If you like fishing, it is open to go fishing but you need a license. So, if you just need a vacation or want to enjoy nature and see some beautiful views and sunsets, go to Big Bear Lake. I'm Tyler Green, State of Events. A furry friend may be key to surviving the pandemic. Here's Corrine Titus telling you why this may be the case. For when the pandemic first began, there has been a spike in the animal adoption industry. Shelter Animals Count is a national database that tracks rescue and shelter activity. More than 26,000 pets were adopted across the country in 2020. A CDC study, Healthy Pets, Healthy People, revealed that pet owners reap mental and physical health benefits. According to the CDC, animals help people cope with loneliness and isolation that COVID-19 protocols have put in place. Carlo Cornejo, the dog dad of two adopted blue nosed pit bulls, gained comfort and happiness with his adorable pups. It's been a really great experience to see how my animals have kind of cared for me throughout this tough time of COVID. Amelia Fungi, the Berkeley Director of Animal Care Commission, said that their adoption rates have actually dropped. 
Potential pets like senior cats, pit bulls, and German shepherds typically get left behind because they are seen as less desirable. However, she still supports the idea of people bringing home a furry friend during the pandemic. There, there's the, um, <clears throat> the companionship aspect to it that I think it's it's actual company with a you know a soft warm living being um, and that's meaningful to us as human beings to have that kind of companionship. Improvement in your physical health is another bonus of being a pet owner. The CDC mentioned that having a pet decreases your blood pressure and cholesterol levels while increasing opportunity of exercise and outdoor activities. Pet owner Lorraine Sims is constantly active after she recently brought home another kitten into the family. We also have Foxy and we adopted her from a local uh, humane society and we love them they keep us going like therapy over a million animals are euthanized each year if bringing home a four or two like an animal sparks your interest berkeley shelters are available online at www.cityofberkeley.info slash animal services in oakland california i'm corinne titus state of event news who doesn't love a cute furry friend to keep them company <laughs> Well, that concludes this week's episode of San Francisco State of Events. Thank you for joining us. Once again, I'm Farrah Walton. And I'm Clarissa Gonzalez. Thanks so much for watching State of Events. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Until next time, we'll see you later, Gators.